Okay, so as somebody that's been a fan of the Yu Yu Hakusho anime for nearly 20 years, I feel very conflicted and torn with my thoughts and opinion on the live-action adaptation of Yu Yu Hakusho that's recently been released by Netflix. I mean, as most anime and manga fans know, there's definitely a large track record of live-action adaptations from anime and manga not turning out to be the best, per se. So off-rip, I was coming into this one very skeptical to begin with. But I got a whole lot to say from the good, the bad, the ugly and everything in between all of those layers because there's definitely a lot to talk about with this adaptation so why don't we do that and in case you have no idea what Yu Yu Hakusho is all about essentially a teenager named Yusuke Urameshi one day is hit by a vehicle while helping out a young child that is in the middle of the road ultimately after being killed from the accident he undergoes some trials to essentially potentially get his body back and in doing so leads him into becoming what they call a spirit detective fighting against demons and different type of beasts in order to essentially save the world. Along the journey, he slowly but surely forms a group consisting of Kuwabara, Hiei, and Kurama, along with, of course, Botan, Koenma. Like, there is a really colorful cast of characters. This is for my day ones, gotta be clear. Still moving on, baby, but I wish she was here. Still moving on, baby, but I gotta get there. Now, there's definitely some changes from the anime to live action off Rip Yusuke Urameshi in the anime. is 14 years old in the live action he is 17 years old so a three year difference not the most radical departure by any means but definitely something to note and design wise as far as the aesthetics of the four main characters Yusuke for the most part embodied the badassery and felt like a believable interpretation of our beloved delinquent and character design wise for the most part the actor did look similar to Yusuke Kuwabara however I was a little torn because looks wise Kuwabara didn't necessarily look like the character from the anime I mean Kuwabara is a redhead in the anime in the live action he has blonde hair and just in general like at first glance you would think that he kind of looks like Kisaki from Tokyo Revengers, but the actor definitely nailed the spirit of Kuwabara. Likewise with the way he was directed. He feels like Kuwabara from the outlandish and outrageous tone that Kuwabara sometimes can have. Ultimately, at the very least, he felt like, okay, he, he reminds me of Kuwabara even if he doesn't look identical to him. However, the other two of the four main characters, it kind of gets a little messy for me. For starters, Kurama, he kind of felt like him as far as character-wise, the way the actor portrayed him. However, looks-wise, Kurama's wig drove me nuts, and his Yoko form wasn't doing him any justice either. And considering that transformation is supposed to be like an iconic look, it definitely wasn't nailed and it didn't deliver the greatness that Yoko Kurama is supposed to ensue. So I'm kind of 50-50 with the four main characters. And then some of the surrounding cast. Botan was okay. For the most part, she gave me a feel of Botan. She looked like her. Koema was decent, but it is worthy to note that they completely wrote out his baby form, which is how you see him for a good majority of the series. He doesn't actually appear as an adult until way down the road towards the Dark Tournament. Keiko's actress wasn't as outspoken as the original Keiko from the anime, but I will admit that for the most part, they gave her a decent direction and honestly the actress was absolutely beautiful so if they were trying to make Keiko just be this gorgeous woman then job well done the leader of team Tagoro Sakyo was decent he embodied the pompous but mysterious nature Tarukane was great I mean he wasn't as fugly as Tarukane from the anime but he felt straight up like okay yeah this is totally Tarukane the money grubbing gambling bozo Elder Tagoro's casting was very well done, very creepy and just all around, ugh. I will say sometimes the CG looked a little wonky, but for the most part, he was creepy. Younger Tagoro was good. Again, CG sometimes was wonky, but his acting was on point and he really delivered the spirit of Younger Tagoro. Karasu was good. Kind of missed out on the blonde transformation, but I didn't see that as a big deal. And then some characters that were just completely omitted from the live action adaptation are Kuwabara's sister, George the Ogre, Rando and major portions of his arc, the Four Saint Beast, and the actual Dark Tournament itself. Literally outside of Team Yurameshi and Team Tagoro, the entirety of the Dark Tournament was removed. 
Which brings me to the next portion of what I wanted to talk about in this one is the fact that this adaptation is five hour long episodes a piece so essentially it's about five hours total and it condenses roughly 66 episodes of Yu Yu Hakusho into five hours which if you do the math you will very quickly realize that there was a ton of rushing i mean certain plot lines that start off in one arc in the beginning last all the way through until the last arc it is just kind of in terms of adaptation wise somewhat of a mess however that's not to say that you can't have some enjoyment and that it's exactly a bad thing because while Yu Yu Hakusho is indeed my favorite anime of all time and I absolutely love and admire it I will say that the live action adaptation has its own merits as well but yeah we do need to talk about what the heck was going on with them merging multiple arcs and skipping arcs and just in general because as an adaptation as far as straight up looking at it as taking the anime and turning it into live action it definitely doesn't deliver the adventure one to one by any stretch of the imagination certain parts of Hiei's character arc last all the way into Toguro when that is supposed to be resolved by the four same beasts when they team up to go to May's castle like there are so many different things that they did wrong they omitted and they merged essentially they took Tarukane's stronghold arc the first time Yusuke and Kuwabara and counter team Toguro or at the very least elder Toguro and younger Toguro they merged that along with the actual dark tournament itself removed the tournament aspect and all of the other contestants and turned it into one big final clash they definitely remembered to put in key elements that fans would absolutely want like Hiei's dragon of the darkness flame and Kurama turning into Yoko Kurama so they made sure to keep some of the main key elements but as far as adaptation wise it is an abomination if you wanted to get Yu Yu Hakusho straight up and down on live action I mean for crying out loud again it's only five episodes and even though each episode is roughly an hour there's no way possible you could squeeze 66 episodes of content into that time frame but in that same regard it definitely allows for Yu Yu Hakusho to do something that some not all but definitely a few small minority of fans in the Yu Yu Hakusho fandom has criticized Yu Yu Hakusho for in the past and that's that there's never a dull moment with the live action. Some fans of the anime have complained that especially early on, Yu Yu Hakusho felt a bit sluggish. You know, him trying to get back to his body felt like it dragged on. And with the live action adaptation, things is lightning speed and it never feels like you're bored. Honestly, I can't even off the top of my head think of one time while watching this that I felt dull, bored, or disinterested. I was genuinely enthralled, which is one of the many dilemmas of as a Yu Yu Hakusho fan that I feel torn with in the fact that while it definitely doesn't by any means abide by allowing the Yu Yu Hakusho anime to be a straight up copy into the live action adaptation for what it does work with of these five hours of content it really truly gives you a pretty cool experience like I was genuinely enjoying myself throughout it even when I would catch oh they omitted this character oh they changed that oh gosh they rushed through that one oh they merged these arcs like all of those problems aside one of the biggest Yu Yu Hakusho fans ever in existence myself will tell you that I was having fun which is a rarity with live action adaptations in general sans the one piece live action you know that kind of broke the mold which I say all that to say that despite the fact that Yu Yu Hakusho's live action adaptation from Netflix definitely differs immensely from the same spirit that the anime has ultimately for what it delivers it does it pretty well like i truly felt the camaraderie between the characters you know from use k's wake early on in the series to them going up against team toguro use k having to go up against goki to retrieve the orb there were so many different instances that i was like wow they actually brought this to life and even though it's not a one-to-one -one, it's still freaking cool another major controversial factor that i actually have to elaborate for some fans that may not no, is the fact of Genkai, which I thought was pretty cool that they didn't completely skip out on Genkai. She does definitely train Yusuke Kei and allows him to evolve to a certain degree. However, something that anime fans may or may not know about Genkai's fate in the anime is the fact that in the actual Yu Yu Hakusho anime, Genkai survives through and through. And just a heads up, there's going to be a big spoiler here. So if you don't want to be spoiled on Yu Yu Hakusho, first of all, you've had about 20, 30 years to watch it. But also, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Because in the original manga of Genkai, which the Yu Yu Hakusho anime is based off of, Genkai actually indeed is taken out. However, in the anime, they kept her alive 
possibly due to her popularity and just in general it fit very well for Yusuke to continue having his sensei but in the live action they actually are more faithful to the manga because Genkai actually is taken out in the massive battle that they have right before the team Yurameshi versus team Taguro all out brawl so I guess kudos to the live action for actually sticking closer to the manga in a certain regard despite it not doing that like 90% of the time because kind of going back to the whole premise of again this being rushed essentially if I was to sum it all up as far as the rushing they did with each arc you can kind of look at each arc as essentially an abridged version of the actual arcs or even the fights for that matter some of these fights in Yu Yu Hakusho will last episodes upon episodes, especially the stuff with Team Taguro versus Team Yurameshi. However, in the live action, some of these battles within 20-30 minutes are resolved and that's that. Which brings me to my conclusion that overall the biggest problem with the live action Yu Yu Hakusho is in general pacing. The series tries to tell 66 anime episodes into 5 hour long live action pieces which leaves very little room for innovation and faithfulness. And I've seen some arguments that people say that oh man if it just had a couple of more episodes and I disagree. I think adding a few more episodes would just even further demonstrate just how much of a rush job they had with this product. There's no way possible even with those extra 3 hours that you would have been able to tell this story as accurate as it's supposed to be told from the anime because there's just just not enough time however all things considered for newcomers to the franchise i think it's a solid introduction that i would definitely recommend should be followed up immediately with checking out the anime if not definitely doing it vice versa watch the anime and if you want a little bit more yu yu Hakusho, check out the live action and for longtime Yu Yu Hakusho fans, I think at the very least you can appreciate the series for what it is. It's not trying to be a one to one of the show and doesn't pretend to. Think of it as an abridged live action version of the classic anime you know and love with some elements of the spirit captured whilst missing the totality of what the original anime brought forth. And overall, personally, me, I had a blast watching it. I definitely understand that there was problems. I definitely understand that it is not the Yu Yu Hakusho that you remember per se because of it missing out on many elements. Like, I mean, come on, dog. You skipped out on the Four Saint Beast. Like, there's so many epic moments there where you see Hiei for the first time using some of his powers, his speed, kind of getting those trust issues with him. Kuwabara versus the White Tiger was just, like, the craziest battle. So, definitely is unfortunate that we miss out on a lot of key elements. And, of course, the greatest tournament arc of all time, the Dark Tournament, not really being the Dark Tournament. It's more like, what would have happened in Tarukane's stronghold if the Taguro brothers didn't throw the fight and actually went all out? And also, Bui and the rest of Team Taguro were present and combated against Kurama, Kuwabara, and the rest of the game. So, as a whole, if I had to give it a score of 1 through 10, I would say it's a solid 6.5, maybe on a good day, if you're really feeling generous, a 7. Some of the fight scenes look clean, some of the fight scenes look vicious especially some of the original stuff that they added in early on kind of look cool and i honestly would say if you just want to watch something really cool you should check it out but don't ever get it twisted 110 percent always 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 i was stressed if you want to get into yu yu haka show go with the anime it's the best version of the story beating out the manga and definitely this live action adaptation but still i got kind of a bit of love for this live action adaptation all that being said but i'm curious if you checked out live action yu yu haka show on netflix what do you think about it yay nay if you're a newcomer to this how did you feel about it as just a story in general if you're coming from the anime or the manga do you feel like it's a travesty and they dropped the ball or you feel like they did okay and your overall thoughts of the series as a whole i mean long live yu yu haka show i wish we would get more stories someday because it's one of the greatest shonen anime of all time one of the greatest shonen stories of all time and it's by the author of hunter hunter i'm sure you've heard of that one but that's all i have for this one i'm tim and as always people have an awesome day subscribe and hit that bell to get more yeah action maybe you can see when i'm moving never can i lie to the beauty never can i have what i'm doing maybe our love is a movie maybe our love is a movie maybe our love is a movie never can i have what i'm doing maybe our love is a movie